very interested to know what you at the WWF see as the major causes of climate change and how close do you think we are to the point of no return? Well, I think the scientific evidence is pretty well established that the causes of climate change are primarily changes in the atmosphere uh, and those result from emissions uh, mainly from fossil fuels by humans. There are some other uh, greenhouse gases which may not come from fossil fuel burning but from other industrial processes. But clearly the huge rise in these gases in the last uh, 100 years or so uh, is, is arising from human activity. Uh, and what we know about the climate system, and it is a very complicated system, is that you can get reinforcing cycles. For example, um, as the climate warms, uh, if we have permafrost melting, we may get gas releases uh, where the gas has been uh, frozen uh, for uh, thousands of years, uh, which in turn increases the warming, which then increases the, the, the melting and the release of gas. So we have to avoid that spiraling out of control of the climate cycle. And because we're on a trajectory of industrial uh, pollution and emissions, uh, we need to take action very soon uh, to avoid that happening. I think the other thing to say is that we need to talk not only to the climate scientists, but also to the economists. And what the economists tell us is that it's much cheaper to tackle climate change now uh, rather than delay and defer. So what do you feel from that that both business and government should be doing about it? What do you think their sort of direct uh, you know, input should be? Well, I think government and business have uh, uh, distinct roles. I think the primary role of government is to create the, the framework within which business operates. And that means creating the rules, the regulations, the taxes, uh, uh, and so on, which uh, provide a level playing field for businesses to compete on. Um, and, and indeed, I think that's what businesses want. They want governments to set a, a clear framework and also a consistent framework that doesn't keep changing with the political cycles so that business can get on and invest and uh, use all their entrepreneurial drive and uh, ingenuity to address uh, all the challenges of business including how to operate in a climate and carbon constrained world. So we're, we're here at COP19 um, David, do you, do you feel that that framework is actually being put in place sufficiently quickly uh, and, and sufficiently stably for business to be able to create a strategic plan to work towards that? Um, sadly, I don't think we're where we need to be and we need to get our foot on the accelerator in this whole uh, global negotiation process. And um, that, that's partly in my view because the, the whole COP process gets caught up in this sort of uh, a, a climate change negotiations bubble. Um, in which everybody's thinking about the political positioning and the trade-offs there are between one government view and another and so on. But in the end, this is about what is scientifically necessary. It's not about what is politically convenient uh, or even politically possible. Um, let me contrast these talks with the World Trade Talks. When the world gets together to do World Trade Talks, we can agree whatever we like because humans can decide the rules on which we trade with each other. But we humans can't decide the rules of physics. The rules of physics are a given. We can't negotiate with physics. So we have to accept that's the climate system, that's how it operates. What are we going to do within that framework that's a given for us? And you don't get that sense here of governments being really determined to get a deal which matches what the science says we have to do. So do you feel it's something on the, the, that actually the business could do to try and make government sort of act quicker? 
Yes, I think that um, actually some of the most exciting things happening on the climate front are being led by business, uh, sometimes even despite uh, government. Um, of course, sometimes governments do very good things. The UK Climate Act, which has been uh, uh, used by a number of other countries around the world, Denmark, Mexico and others, uh, is a great example of really good uh, framework legislation. Um, but overall, we don't have governments providing in, enough of a, the right kind of framework. But businesses still can see, because uh, many businesses look long-term, they're thinking about their business being sustainable into the future. And so they're thinking about, well, if that's in the end the way the world's going to have to go because of the laws of physics and the realities of, of climate, uh, what can we do to create products and services which uh, will be appealing and competitive in that environment? And uh, so you see in the transport sector a lot of innovations, um, the whole move to the use of IT, uh, of course that does use uh, a fair bit of energy, but it can save us enormous amounts of energy. Um, so I think this is, is very exciting. And uh, just to sort of sum up um, with that, David, what, what are the WWF currently engaged in to assist this process? So WWF's role is, is partly to advocate with government and to encourage and cajole and uh, put some pressure uh, on government and indeed to encourage the public to do so, to say we do want you to take action and to agree measures which will uh, provide a framework within which uh, we can protect our climate on which we and, and all other species on earth depend. Uh, secondly, we we do the same with business and say, can you step up? What can you do uh, to reduce your own carbon emissions? But also we will partner with uh, progressive businesses to work with them to look at how can they uh, improve their operations and particularly look down their supply lines. Where are their products and so on coming from and what are the carbon emissions uh, associated with that uh, supply chain and how can those be reduced and sometimes it's very dramatic uh, what can be done when you look at uh, agricultural produce for example um, uh, and, and so on um, and sometimes we also get into how can companies re-understand the nature of their own business so for example, uh, if you're a, a power supply, an electricity supply company, you may think you know, our job is to supply electricity, but actually your job might be to provide warm homes for people, and maybe there are other ways of doing that. If you're, uh, let me give a controversial example, if you're an airline, you may think you're in the business of flying people around the world. But actually, perhaps you're in the connectivity business. Your job is to help people connect with each other. Occasionally, that does mean people need to fly. But maybe it means up, up level, high level video conferencing. And that would be uh, an alternative long term for your business to develop into. So we, we want to have those kind of quite challenging conversations with people, um, as well as get looking with them at the practical realities of, of steps they can take immediately. Fantastic. David, thank you very much indeed for joining us. It's been a pleasure speaking with you. Thank you. Thank you.